So here we are in the lab of the future. But today we're dealing almost with exactly the same issues that we've been dealing 200 years ago. Let's just take food adulteration, also commonly known as food fraud. In 1820, Friedrich Ackham, a German chemist, wrote a book about food adulteration. And in his book, he mentioned spices, beer, coffee, and tea. To date, almost 200 years later, the European Commission hit list of the most frequently adulterated food encompasses all those that Frederick Ackham mentioned 200 years ago. What is the difference? The difference is the fact that the food adulteration has become much more sophisticated. The tools that chemists used back in the old days would no longer detect the types of fraud that we're seeing to date. So what do we need? We need more sophisticated methods. We need better methods. And this is something for laboratories to develop for now and the future frauds to come. What we anticipate over the next years is that food fraud becomes even more sophisticated with newer methods to do the adulteration. That drives our method development as well. And we're anticipating that food detection will also more move towards cloud-based computing. We're more using data resources. We're more using computer power to actually detect and also potentially predict adulteration. That will ultimately make it safer for the producer and last but not least for the consumer. Let me give you one specific example. The top one adulterated product in Europe is Italian olive oil. Extra virgin Italian olive oil very often is adulterated by other olive oils coming from major oil producing countries in Europe, but also overseas. So we have the Greek olive oil, we have the Spanish olive oil and the Turkish olive oil. How do we distinguish between the authentic Italian olive oil and all the others? We have used modern technology, in this case mass spectrometry, to develop a set of parameters that allows us to clearly distinguish between the Italian and the other olive oils. We have looked at a whole range of 500 different parameters. And of those 500, only 63 allowed us to differentiate between the Italian olive oil and all the other olive oils. So if there is an adulteration, it will almost be impossible to adulterate or change all 63 parameters so that we couldn't detect that fraud. With those 63 parameters that we're looking at, it's almost impossible to deceive the producer, the retailer, and last but not least, the consumer. So here we have a new method that is specific, that allows us to uniquely identify if the Italian olive oil has been adulterated or if it's hopefully authentic. So in the future, what we will see is more likely that not just the olive oil will be tested for adulteration by a non-targeted approach, as we call it, but also many, many other foods. What we need for that is really a huge computing power behind it. And when you look at the future development of the technology, the analytical technology on the one hand, so mass spectrometry, for example, as well as the computing power and, and cloud computing on the other hand, you will see that we need both capacities, both development to be able to handle all the data. But that will give us the tremendous advantage of looking at any food possible to identify if there's something wrong with the food, if there is mycotoxin in it above a certain level, if there are pesticides in it, or if the food has been adulterated. So all of that will help us to drive the better food for the future. This is why we at Maria Nutrisciences imagine the lab of the future to look something like this. And we anticipate that it will be much more data-driven, providing real-time results and allowing us to fulfill our mission to move from protection of health to improvement of health.